Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. Dell and Debbie's Mind, Body, Soul, the home of invigorating talk on all things to do with health and well-being. And I am one of your hosts, Del A.D. Jones, and I'm a certified transformational coach and three principles teacher and practitioner. I teach my clients how to achieve a more peaceful, inspired and joy-filled life regardless of their external circumstances. And before I introduce my wonderful co-host, I'm going to remind everybody that we are a call-in show. And our call-in number is 323-284-7826. And we also have our Facebook page open. If you have any questions or comments, you can go to Dell and Debbie's Mind, Body, Soul on our Facebook page and make a comment or a question. And now by my side here is my wonderful co-host. Thank you, Dell. Hello, everybody. I'm the other half of our show, Dell and Debbie, Mind, Body, Soul. I'm Debbie Carlin Boyle, and I'm certified as an integrative nutrition, health, and wellness coach, a personal trainer, and a fitness instructor. And I try to help my clients and people find balance in their life with everything that feeds us, in addition to the food on our plate. And today, our show is literally going to rock. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Our guest, Tris and Bowden was the longtime drummer for the band Chicago up until a few months ago. As a performer, he has been in studio sessions and on tour with some of the most notable and highest selling musicians of all time, such as Neil Diamond, Kenny Loggins, Firefall, Roger Daltrey, Crosby, Stills & Nash, Al Jarreau, Shaka Khan, Michael McDonald, and there are so many more than that, not more notable groups and artists. Tris is a lung cancer survivor whose positive attitude and infectious, joyful spirit helps to inspire others going through challenging times. Here today to light us up with his amazing journey so far, will you please welcome our guest, Tris Mboden. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Tris. Yes. Such, a, such an inspirational story. We can't wait to get into all the details. <laughs> But yes. as always, we like to start off in the big, at the beginning. So just tell us where you grew up and a um, little bit about your family background. Okay. Uh, I grew, grew up at the beaches of Orange County. Wow. And uh, actually, my earliest memories were Naples, uh, California. Uh, but then my family moved to Sunset Beach, California. Mm -hmm. From there to Huntington Harbor, Newport Beach, and from there, I ended up in Laguna Beach for about 12 years. Wow. And uh, So were you a typical California surfer boy growing up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I still am. You still oh, are. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can attest to that. Yeah. And um, so at what age did you just jump in the water and say, this feels right, and get on that board? I started surfing about eight. Wow. Okay. And, uh, and I am now... Gee, dare I say it? 67 years old. <laughs> Which wow. would surprise yeah. anybody exactly. who meets you. You look it, it, amazing. Yes, amazing. Oh, yes. Well, There's you're something... too generous. No. Thank you. Well, it's true. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that was a huge passion of yours. Yes. And uh, it's it, throughout my life, it's something I always return to. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, you know, during a, sort of the dark periods in, of rock and roll lifestyle and that, you know, uh, I was a very willing participant, I have to say, for maybe too many years. Yeah. But surfing yeah. would always just kind of like, once I'd get back in the ocean, it was just like, what are you doing? And what, you know. Yeah, uh, it was like the refresher, the the wake up call, the, the born again, the cleanser. Yeah, that's exactly. the word. Exactly, yeah. cleanser. Yeah. yeah. 
Nice. And uh, yeah, it means so much to me. I, you know, I've, I mean, I live in Malibu. I'm surrounded by surfers, but I do not go in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. um, but I hear everybody that surfs says that it's a spiritual experience. It just With is. So. Without a doubt, yeah, yeah it is a completely a spiritual experience, and at its highest level, it's uh, for me, it's such a beautiful form of self-expression, mm -hmm. too. I mean, it's really a dance. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, between you and the waves, between you, you and to, the waves, you navigate and and yeah. the parallels between life itself. Oh, and, interesting. And each w each wave being different. Yeah. And requiring a different maneuver at a different yeah. time, um, and it's, you it's have to, so, so much like life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you have know? to it work. Is. Yeah. Wow, you, That's you have so to true. work with it. You can't muscle a wave. I mean, the ocean is so powerful. Oh, oh yeah. You have to have such respect and the ability to ride it. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. I also had the the privilege of living on the north shore of the island of Kauai. Mm. Uh, for about seven years. Mm, uh, that's some of the best surfing in the world. It really Gorgeous. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. But talk about the power of Mother Ocean. <laughs> yeah, you got to huh. respect that, I right? I mean, <laughs> without sounding too gross, I, uh, um, I had, may I say this, raising nets in my board shorts a few times. <laughs> from, uh, uh, that was a nice way of putting yeah, it. I don't think any of them So how, I mean, like, so, so what was it that was so scary about that? I know that they have big. massive waves, but what is the, some of the biggest waves you've surfed? Well, uh, double overhead plus is real, a real powerful wave mm -hmm. in Hawaii. Here is a very powerful wave, but there... The waves, uh, particularly on Kauai, they travel all that great distance and then hit, you know, shallow water. Mm -hmm. and, and it's open ocean. I mean, yeah. it's open ocean between Kauai and Japan. Mm -hmm. And so it, and, and the Aleutians uh, were those big storms uh, that, that form all the big waves in the winter come from. So it, uh, it's just open ocean and wow. all of a sudden... You <laughs> and, yeah. are and experiencing this wave, so yeah. I, or waves, and <laughs> and that's the thing. You're uh, always in danger of getting caught inside, and I, I have nightmares on occasion about that <laughs> yeah. that very thing. Still but, happening. But, uh, yeah. But so it's so wonderful that it's remained your constant and yeah. something to go back to in no matter what's going on in your life. Yes. But yeah. you had another passion growing yes. up. Tell uh, us about that. Well, okay, this sounds really corny, and those that know me already know the story. But uh, when I was about five years old, and I remember it vividly, my father had taken me to a, a parade in Huntington Beach, and it was a 4th of July parade, I believe. And uh, this marching band went by, and the drum section was so good and so powerful. And so, I mean, I get You're goosebumps like now, you know, even <laughs> thinking about it. it. Wow. Oh, it just, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry, literally. <laughs> I was so moved. Yeah. And at five years old, I'd never experienced emotions like that, you <laughs> yeah. know. Or a response like that uh, to anything. So uh, anyway, I it sounds corny, I know, but I knew then that one day I was going to be a drummer. Wow! And uh, so my trajectory was kind of everything set. Right towards that. Yeah. 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 So you studied music when you were in school at a young age, but you I, I did. You didn't weren't able to play the drums at first. You like played the trumpet or trumpet? Boy, did you do your <laughs> no, homework, Deb. Homework. I'm impressed. <laughs> really? <laughs> I did it. Yeah. So, yeah. In junior high school, actually, no, even before that, grade school, uh, at Huntington Beach uh, the Elementary, that you could actually be a part of the band um, at, along with the seventh and eighth graders. And uh, oh, nice. when you were in the they let sixth you kinda grade. Go up. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So uh, everybody... You know, you'd choose an instrument mm -hmm. and and uh, try to talk your parents into purchasing <laughs> one or yeah. renting yeah, one. Yeah, we remember and those days. Yeah. <laughs> but your parents I were pretty and supportive, right? I brought a drum right? kit for yeah. my son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That he lent to somebody along the, the way. <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> well, that's not hard to imagine. Exactly. Everybody loves the drums. But, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I wanted to play the drums, of course, but there was no room in the drum section. 
So I had to choose another instrument. So I played trumpet for the first year. Mm -hmm. And uh, and actually, I did okay and, and got to be second chair. You know, I had a good ear for music. Uh, right. my, both your, my parents. Uh, your mom was a pianist? You know, she was a pianist, yeah. And my dad, I, I laughingly say, was uh, actually the best dashboard drummer I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that yeah. gives you rhythm, at least. Yeah. That gets you going. So yeah, that's he good. had a great singing voice. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it was a musical household. You know, mm -hmm. I was always around music. Now, so. were you, a, um, how many siblings, or were you an only child? Uh, no, I have a sister who is two mm -hmm. years younger than me, Stephanie. Yeah. And, uh, and was she musical yeah, was too? She? Yeah, well, you know, she actually never played an instrument to speak of. But her uh, mode of expression is as a writer. She's wow. like a like a, yeah. a published poet. Wonderful. And uh, but boy, she loves music. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, and, and has great taste in music too. Yeah. I mean, you know, she she plays all your records. Ear. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> right. She's the one. Of course she has. <laughs> no, I think there's more than one person who yeah. plays your records. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, so, so, so yeah. you did have a supportive household, yes. which is always great. For, yes. For music. Yes. So, I I did to a point, Deb. Uh, until, like, in my teens. Oh, uh, they wanted my, you to get serious. Yeah, my yeah. folks had designs <laughs> on me going to USC and becoming a doctor. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Of course. And it, and it was, like, obvious, more and more obvious, that that, that wasn't going to happen. I was a good student there for a while. But then, uh, you know, of course, I was so into music and, and then girls. Yeah, know? of course. So of course. And music and, and girls surfing, kind of and go together and surfing. Yeah. They certainly do. There's a full <laughs> circle thing there. But it's hard to, to sort of like, I used yeah. to say to my son when he wanted to take up drumming, I'd say, sweetheart, don't you like, don't you want to get a guitar or something? Because that way, if you want to woo girls, I mean, it's easier yeah. to go down to the beach and play a guitar rather yeah. than take your whole drum set down there. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> In fact, there's an old story about uh, uh, Charlie Parker, mm -hmm. the the brilliant and, and maybe one of the most influential jazz saxophonists mm -hmm. of all time. He was originally was a drummer, but he got so oh. tired of watching while he was packing up his drum set, <laughs> yeah. the rest of the band leaving with all the girls. Oh, yes. <laughs> interesting. So he switched. He switched. Oh. <laughs> Did that happen to you? Man. Did that happen to, does that happen to you when no. you play? No. <laughs> <laughs> they wait around? Oh, yes. <laughs> Drummers came into fashion along the way. Yeah, 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 they did. That's pretty funny. That's so adorable. Did, so when you were at school, were you in bands or anything? Yeah. Or how did, how did that? Yes, I played in the marching band in, that, uh, in junior high school only. But by the time I was in high school, I was already a professional. Yeah. Uh, I was playing, you know, uh, the dances at school and getting paid to do it. Yeah, you know? yeah. so that's a yeah. working so, musician. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And... and uh, and I, oddly enough, uh, upon graduation f uh, from Newport Harbor High School, I was asked to join a band uh, that went on to become famous in its own right. So Which band was that? Was it that was Honk? a band called Honk. Honk. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing that kind of put us on the map was uh, we had done the soundtrack for a surf movie called Five Summer Stories, oh, okay. which has the distinction, or at least had for a while, of the biggest box office gross of a 16 millimeter film oh, really? of any kind. You wow. know, was it a short film time. or was it no, no, full, it was yeah, a, it was a full, full length, full length yeah. two hour film? Yeah. Wow. And, and uh, very innovative in its photographic techniques. And that. Mm -hmm. uh, the director was Greg McGillivray and Jim Freeman, his partner who's passed on. Uh, but Greg McGillivray has gone on to do all those IMAX films oh, like, okay. like Everest and uh, oh, so he Sea was innovative at the that. time. Yeah. What year uh, was, did did you was, do that soundtrack that in that about movie? That was 1971. Okay, 72. so that's a very pivotal, pretty uh, an innovative on. time to yeah. be doing something like that. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. So and we had a number one record in Hawaii as yeah. a result. So and that, and then you were on your way. Yeah. 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 Anyway. yeah. So how how um 
because I, I, I know we want to get to your health and things like that as uh -huh. well. So w when you first sort of got into bands, honk and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, what was the lifestyle like that? We, we know what it was like in the 80s when we, <laughs> when yeah. we were around. The 70s and 80s. I was what, a groupie in the 70s, early <laughs> okay. 70s. The Beach Boys, I followed them everywhere. Oh, and then the Grateful Dead and on it goes. I mean, yeah. I'm still but a huge a lot rock of, and roll fan. Um, there was a lot of temptation and it was, it was definitely a lot of drugs and sex and rock and roll in those days. So was that yes. sort of... Absolutely. You got into and, that pretty quickly. And you, yeah, you alluded oh, yeah. that that was your... Oh, yeah. definitely. And by the time I uh, I had joined the Kenny Loggins band, mm -hmm. uh, we were invited to open for Fleetwood Mac on the Rumors Tour, right? Oh, that was a big that tour. I, went, I saw nine, that tour. Yeah? That was a big maybe tour. You saw I probably did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the one time I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, oh, my God, the debauchery mm -hmm. was just rampant. Between the know? two bands and all the after oh, all parties. Of that. And, all of yeah. that. And, mm -hmm. and then all the, the other, uh, you know, willing participants and believers. Yeah. You know, that. <laughs> so did it, affect, um, did it affect your ability to be the best you could be at your craft you know, I was so young, and I thought I was bulletproof. Yeah, yeah. Like, like everybody yeah, does. Like everybody at that like age. Like we all did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. invincible. And it didn't. It took uh, a number of years before it. I realized that it was. It was really affecting my performance, mm -hmm. and it was. Ev it was really evident to me on the wide screen, as I call it, yeah. on playbacks mm. in the studio. That's what you I know, was I could hear this tension or something in my playing uh, mm -hmm. that the drums are the foundation of, mm -hmm. of any mm -hmm. recording yeah. and or, or mm -hmm. any musical performance and as such they have to be very steady and 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 very sure and and uh, convincing mm -hmm. and uh, I'd hear myself hesitate or or rush or whatever mm -hmm. and it was like uh -uh, that's yeah. not gonna work so that you was know? your so, that was your yeah. own internal critic so d did anybody else give you that feedback or was that just you no, being that was very me. aware yeah yeah i'm being, hypercritical of yeah. my my own performances anyway you know mm -hmm. so but it didn't yeah. sort of manifest outside to the point where somebody was like saying come on you gotta like well, slow was, down a little uh, yeah no gratefully no yeah yeah, yeah. uh I, but even during that time in the 80s when everything was just party, 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 you, were you able, I mean, you were never addicted to anything, were you? Oh, or, <laughs> oh did I ask the wrong question? Oh, man. <laughs> I was addicted, let me see, to, I think the only one, I'll just say it. Yeah, just as say As far it. as, uh, gratefully, I didn't get into opiates mm -hmm. because when it came to cocaine and and so big alcohol, in the 80s everywhere. and mm -hmm. I was a smoker, mm -hmm. like a heavy smoker, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you more about that. Yeah, in a yeah, we're going to get into uh, that. And I, I was pretty much addicted to everything. You were, you know? so yeah. it was yeah. just the lifestyle yeah. just made you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I have to say, not as a rationalization or a defense, I hope, but it was almost encouraged. And expected of a musician back then. Oh, without yeah. a doubt, yeah. absolutely. It's the lifestyle. So, and even yeah. even yeah. in in our industry, I mean, I I was did costume designs, and I had, you know, I would go, like on movies and commercials and everything, music videos, a lot of music videos. Mm. But I mean, the drugs were on the table at the breakfast meetings. Right. I mean, that's how open it was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Same. Yeah, it was right. insane. Yeah. So I mean, now you would. Well, I don't think you'd ever see it now. I don't oh, know. But yeah. there yeah. it was completely out in the open. In that, production, we yeah. were expected yeah. to okay. supply it, yeah. you know, yeah. that's it would, to our clients. Yeah. It, was, it, partly, it was like handing them a Coke to drink. <laughs> yeah. We had to hand them a Coke to snort. It was just expected. And, yeah. But things, you know, things yeah, did things change. Things changed, thank goodness. But, yeah, yeah. I, I saw so, – but going back to – I mean, you said, thank goodness you didn't get into opiates. But yeah. I think that sometimes – I mean – all the people that I saw that got heavily, hev heavily into the cocaine, it was equally as, as damaging. People oh, yeah. lost everything. Oh, I mean, I it was a very, very, you know, You must have seen so much around Absolutely. you. Yeah. yeah, And it was such a seductive drug. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, before you even realized it, yeah. you were completely, cons I mean, totally into it, 
addicted and, yeah. and you know, mm-hmm. and it was so easy to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I had my fair share of a few minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That what I would call addiction. Yeah. Um, and so, so, so you, you must have seen so much during that time. I mean, some who did get in the opiates and stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you saw Sadly. some sad yeah. situations. Lost a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. That's yeah. where I was heading. And yeah. that had to be really tough because there's so much talent and such a waste. So too soon, gone too soon. Oh, God, well, then I the know. other thing, too, yeah. going back to, I mean, it's sort of overdosing and things like that on opiates was very common. But I'm... I also noticed how many people were dying in the early 2000s mm-hmm. from their abuse of, of things like cocaine in the, in the 80s. Uh-huh. They, they were saying that, that, that there was heart damage that wasn't, mm. so they weren't, people mm-hmm. weren't right. being immediately mm-hmm. affected. But down the road, once they hit their 50s, yeah. yes. their hearts weren't as in good a condition as they were oh, then. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I'll, like I'll tell John you a Belushi funny story deal. about yeah. that. Oh, yeah, like John Belushi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to jump around too much, but no, that's okay. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll bring you back. We'll bring okay, you back. Okay. We're just, you know, we'll go through, yeah. sort of chronologically go through and how oh, things shifted and all, all that. Yeah, okay. but stories are good. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I hope I'm not jumping ahead. I'll, I'll say it again. No, go ahead. But, it doesn't matter. But you were speaking of heart-related uh, consequences yeah. to cocaine use. Well. That with a delicate blend of smoking, alcohol, and and you know everything else in my total life. Total abuse. Yeah. Uh, I laughingly again say that that it was heart disease that saved my life. Wow. And yeah. I'll tell you why. Yeah, tell mm. us why. Interesting. Um, right about 2007, there were a team of doctors that were t- that were friends of ours. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say ours, the band Chicago. And a few of us had, had agreed to go through this battery of tests that, you know, gratis, mm-hmm. uh, that these doctors who were Chicago fans had offered. Mm-hmm. Nice. So, yeah, so I went through a then uh, sort of new procedure called an angio uh, CAT scan mm-hmm. because they could view the heart slowed down to a point where they could actually detect blockage in your coronary arteries. Mm. Well, they had detected a 50% blockage in my LAD, which is the one that they call the Mm Widowmaker. So that certainly got my attention. And uh, I was a heavy smoker and and had quit, uh, you know, a few years before, a number of years before that. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, the the combination of, of smoking, cocaine abuse, everything that yeah. I've done yeah. uh, had served to to uh, to contribute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your organs yeah. Um, can only take so much. Yeah. And then yeah. things start to head south. Right, yeah. right. So uh, at the behest of a cardiologist I was seeing, uh, he said, you know, it's been two years and I've had you on this statin drug and, you know, I'm sure it's okay, but with your smoking history... Uh, well, first of all, we want to look at your heart and see whether the statin is sort of like uh, stabilized yeah. uh, uh, the blockage. Uh, and uh, with your smoking history, we'll have a look at your lungs. Well, oh, <laughs> it's a good thing prompt yeah. they did mm. because there was a seven centimeter seven? tumor that's seven? like huge. Huge, yeah, exactly. Be- I mean, uh, go like that. Show what that is because we, we're yeah, an inches well, it's here. Yeah, about the size yeah. of a golf ball. Exactly. Wow. And and uh, maybe a little larger. And it was on my right lung, uh, on the medial lobe. And so anyway, I mean, he called me. I mean, I just got home from having the CAT scan. The phone was ringing. Mm. He said, "I I hate to tell you on the phone, but you know, you have this tumor." Your heart, the good news is your heart's okay. Yeah. So uh, anyway, need, uh, needless to say, it was like being hit with a golf club. Oh, I'm sure. Again, in, upside Did you have temple. any symptoms? I was going to say. That's the thing. Yeah. No, at that point in my life, I was a runner. I I was a, you know. Surfing. You're surfing. You were, surfing. work out at the gym, which is right. how we know each other. Yes. Surfing, you know, relatively big waves in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. No symptoms whatsoever, asymptomatic, mm-hmm. and or asymptomatic mm-hmm. rather. Uh, so 
that's the danger of lung cancer, too, Why? because all too often there are no symptoms. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, as a result of heart disease, wow. they yeah. found this tumor. And miraculously, after going through treatment, simultaneous radiation and chemotherapy, uh, subsequent surgery, and then post-op chemo. Now, how, how many years ago was this? Uh, this was in 2009. 2009, mm -hmm. wow. So. Yeah. So I'm coming up actually on 10 yeah, years, 10 years. That's That's exactly. right. surviving. And yes. it was stage 3A. Yeah. yeah That's the other thing. It's not really... wasn't early stage, no. obviously, no, exactly. because of the size of the tumor. That's they took out incredible. Two, my medial and my lower lobe through a four-inch incision under my arm, wow. which I still can't believe they were able to <laughs> do, that. To do that. And I the thought, things that they can do today. Oh, it's miraculous. I yeah. Amazing. I thought it was they were going to crack me like a lobster. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. Well, and they used to have to do no, that. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And they, so <laughs> that, that where were you at career-wise at that point? Who, what band? Were, you uh, were with Chicago then. I was with then. Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And bless and so, their hearts. Yeah. They, they said... Do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Just please get it done get well. and please survive. Mm -hmm. And we will pay you in your absence. How long were and you? Uh, because they, you said they toured like 10 months out of the year. Yeah. So how long were you I out? I was out for six months. Only six months. And right. uh, the doctors said uh, that they thought that I probably went back a little too Jeez. early. Yeah. But it, it, it's also probably healing was, so, for you. So it was. Yeah. It was yeah. so cathartic for me yeah. to play, yeah. play drums. It's both a cardiovascular event. Exactly. Right. But my spirit, yeah. my spirit the, it was needed, what needed it. I really, yeah. I needed it. And the band uh, was touring together with Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, wow. And that was my favorite touring partner. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when Chicago and Earth, Wind, and Fire would play together, we'd actually play some songs together. Oh, cool. And I'm a huge Earth, Wind, and Fire fan. Yeah. Yes, you know? yes. I've seen them a couple <laughs> so, of times this year, yeah. this yeah. so last two years. When we do that, there was 21 of us on stage oh, wow. at the same time. And we had worked it out so it was so tight. You could not get a credit card in a crack. <laughs> you know, the so horns good. were perfect and the yeah. drums were perfect. So you were Everything able to go perfect. on the road six months later and yeah. do this tour. So you yeah. say the doctor said you might have gone back a little too soon. Were there any repercussions from, from that? Or? Well, no, actually. Oh, okay. I felt myself getting strong. I mean, I almost passed out the yeah. first show, yeah. for sure. Uh, I was in Houston, and I'll never forget looking at the newspaper, and it was 105 with 100% humidity oh, for a well, week. The conditions you know, themselves. Going, yeah, and I was going, it has to get <laughs> drop, but it didn't. So uh, the first show I'll never forget, but I made it through it. And then little by little felt myself getting stronger. stronger. You know, so yeah. what was your lifestyle up till that point, till the point of being diagnosed? Were you still parting quite no. hard? Or, no, you, you had already. No, and I'd so already what was the precipice that had you shift gears? At what point yes. well, did hmm. you realize I'm now not... <laughs> this isn't a game anymore, yeah. and I'm not invincible anymore. And how old were and you? Well, okay, I was uh, in my, my, my late 40s, mm -hmm. and uh, the irony for me, this is I was married to a Peruvian woman, and the irony for me is that she was the one that actually uh, got me out of my cocaine addiction, wow. and she was Peruvian. You know. <laughs> yeah. But she uh, she hated it because she'd grown up around it. I'm you sure. Know? Yeah, so mm -hmm. anyway, I'm, I'll always be grateful to her uh, for that. Yeah. But um, so that was no longer a problem. But my drinking and smoking, that's like soup and sandwich, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah top it all <laughs> off. Yep, yeah. go together. So uh, I, I was still doing that, and... Uh, and finally, it was just like, this is uh, enough, enough yeah. of this. You know, I wanted to, I was going to the gym because I wanted to get healthy, mm -hmm. but I would run on the treadmill and then I'd go out and have a cigarette <laughs> yeah. break. I it see was people like, do that all the time. Yeah, you know, it's so, sort of. Uh, yeah. 
So, so did you give up both? Do you still drink? Or, or no, I know the smoking. Oh no! Went. So yeah, you go up both at the same time, or? Well, actually, I quit smoking. I, I'm sorry, I quit drinking before I quit smoking. Mm. I, had I not, I don't think I would have been able to quit smoking. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. Well, yeah. and did you go to AA? Because doesn't everybody like hang out there and smoke oh, cigarettes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody in you rehabs, to, too. Yeah. You, you had stand to have, outside and smoke you cigarettes. You had to take it in yeah. stages. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. That, yeah. So I, I, I kind of did it in stages. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, that's good. But uh, by the time uh, I was 48 years old, I think I was a non smoker, non drinker. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway. Um, uh, and I, I was living in Hawaii uh, by the uh, by the time I was fifty, and you know surfing Honolulu Bay, uh, which the paddle out alone is like a quarter of a mile, sometimes longer, mm -hmm. uh, because of the it, it just it's a very the reef beautiful is, yeah the, it's I, very challenging yeah. in there yeah, yeah it's, and it's, so it's uh, you know so that yeah. I, I was paying for my uh, my decadent past, you yeah. know, just paddling out, and so I was determined, you know, to to get healthy. Yeah. Good. And so yeah, was, you had. A, 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 let's talk about that a little okay. bit. Once you did get diagnosed and you were sick, what was after the the path to wellness? Let's say what what were the steps? What were the things? And I know attitude played a huge huge part. Yes. And you were such a positive guy. Did you oh. can stay positive or did you go to a dark place for well, a while? It was hard not to go to mm -hmm. a dark place mm -hmm. because cancer, for me, it was my, my worst fear. Of course. It was the, Most the, people. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the darkest specter of, of, you know, end result of my past that I could imagine. And, uh, and my family had had a history of cancer. But never lung cancer, mm -hmm. even though my mom was a heavy smoker and all of that. But uh, so I knew that I had a predilection towards it. Mm -hmm. But I also knew, and my mother, I, I have to say, would always tell me, you know, when you have a negative thought, it's a matter of choice. Mm -hmm. You can replace it. Just try to, you know, exercise, yeah. turning it around. Yeah, Dallas. And, no, and I was so, just, yeah, we always say it's, it, you can't help the thought that comes, you know, I say it's like a bothersome neighbor knocking on your door, uh -huh. but you don't have to invite them in. You, know? uh -huh. <laughs> you can just, like, they're going to come. Can. That's a you good make analogy. the choice. Yeah. You have a choice. Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. And I believe it in all of life we so have a choice. So that came from your mom. That, from right. my mom that, initially, yeah. And you used and, it. And I did. And, and uh, of course, you know, through reading uh, everybody from Wayne Dyer to, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. uh, you know Abraham Hicks, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, and on and on, uh, I learned about that very thing, mm -hmm. and and uh, so I'd always try to turn it around. But but just you know the combination of you know the reality of being beat down through chemotherapy, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. like physically, emotionally, on spiritually, on every level, and radiation and all the and cancer mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's, it was difficult to maintain that that attitude I tried to always go there though mm -hmm. I mean even you know hard. I'd be circling the drain yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's so, so hard like, pull up buddy you're coming in too low you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so, a surfing analogy yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, did you, uh, did you ha I know you had the support of the band during that time. Were you were you married at the time? I know you subsequently remarried, but were you, did you have other support? Actually, it was a perfect storm. I ah. was going through a divorce. Oh, dear. Ooh. Yeah. That and is a really perfect storm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was it was a real troubled time in my life when I mm -hmm. was diagnosed. And uh, uh, I wasn't drinking and smoking or mm -hmm. using or anything, uh, but... Uh, if, I, <laughs> if I ever was going to relapse, yes. it might have been then, but yeah. it, it didn't happen gratefully. Yeah. Um, thank God. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a combination of everything. And they say oftentimes that the, what really precipitates, you know, it is that very thing when emotionally, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're in a, try, at a trying time, yeah. you're you're cellular that's right uh, okay. damage that, very, you know mm -hmm. yeah and everything i mean it can just yeah. stress kick is in. so yeah. 
you know, uh, keeping part of what I do in, in health coaching is try to help people find the joy in their life. Mm -hmm. Because when you stress about something, you're actually creating disease. Mm -hmm. Again, yes. it manifests over a long period of time. It's not just sudden. Yeah, well, right. Your immune but system is low. Yeah, you right. compromise right. everything. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then right. it's it's all a, it's yeah. all related. It's all inter interwound. Yeah. yeah. But you knew that, and you and you yeah. tried to rise above it, obviously, and it, you did. I, I mean, am still, yeah. I can't yeah. believe it. I'm yeah. so grateful. That's you know, wonderful. I have a friend, too, that I, I want to mention. Her name is Pearl Jacks, Jackson. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Pearl Jackman. And she, shortly after I was diagnosed, uh, I mean, she was a family friend, and I already knew that she was a... Uh, lung cancer survivor of inoperable stage 3B right. adenocarcinoma, no less, mm -hmm. which, you know, the survival chances are about, mm -hmm. you know, not very high, uh, particularly inoperable. Yes. And so she was already, uh, I believe, 10 years out mm -hmm. from that. That's and, wonderful. Uh, and so she, I, I, I sought her out. You reached and out to talk, her. Yeah, mm -hmm. and talked to her, and and she was so encouraging. And, yeah. and what kind of things did she say? That more positive of what we're talking thinking, about. Yeah. more mm -hmm. of what we're talking yeah. about. Uh, she was, say, I was saying, God, what about diet and all of that? I mm -hmm. mean, I was eating Cute. very clean because yeah. I was so, I was training hard and all of that and wanted to surf, you know, the the biggest waves I could. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and be strong. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but, but, uh, uh, she said, no, it's not diet, yeah. not for me anyway. And, you know, she was still had, having her cocktails and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it was it was an, Ad an attitude, attitude thing, exactly. I think. Number one. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. But and it helped encourage you to keep the... Exactly. The, the, and, exactly. and reinforce the light that. Lit. Yeah. 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 Good. And, and just to see somebody, Fantastic. you know, survive and be living a successful life and happy. I mean, uh, you just need those because too many, too many exactly, people Dale. tell you yeah. the not so good stories. That's so yeah. true. Yeah. All too often, it's, yes, exactly. it's not the case. So, yeah. So, yeah, you want to talk to every survivor mm -hmm. you can. Yeah. You know, and ask as many questions. Yeah, that's know, wonderful. And then, yeah. so you did you make any other changes yeah. uh, after that? After after the operation, after you, the chemo, D did you just go back to the to your? You said that you were already eating healthy and doing healthy things. Mm -hmm. Did you make any other sh shifts or changes? No, no. actually, uh, I I was just anxious to be. Able, I well, there's a few things I couldn't do uh, just physically, physically anymore, yeah. uh, like run. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I really missed that. Uh, but I started walking on a treadmill, and I still do that on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and doing, in inter intervals. Oh, yeah, yeah on an intensity incline intervals. And, that. and uh, uh, you know, uh, resistance training and all of that. But but aside from that, um, what, what was I going to say? There was one, the other thing that I, ca I can't do. Oh, shortboard. <laughs> I used to love to ride shortboards, yeah. too. And my paddling power has really been cut, oh. so I longboard only now. Yeah. But that's okay because I always loved longboarding, <laughs> and uh, so. So you're talking, you're talking, you can talking to it. it. I can yeah. do it. Yeah, I can you're surf. talking to a non-surfer here, so yeah. I'm just I'm just curious. Uh, what is the difference between a short and a longboard? I know the size, obviously, but right. why why is a short board more board more physically challenging? Okay, because you sit lower in the water. Uh, okay. There's less flotation, and it's harder to paddle. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, and uh, so that's basically it. it. And okay. because of my diminished lung capacity, yeah. uh, I just found it, you know, I, I couldn't do it like I used to. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'll just, you, you know, just readjusted. Yeah. 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 You still get to catch so, the waves and you still get to do yeah. everything. It's yeah. just a little different process. Yeah. Just yeah, new. exactly. Yeah. And, and then um, you also got very involved with the American Cancer Society, too, oh, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, you were, or blowing my mind. <laughs> we really did some we, homework. We <laughs> do. We do our yeah, homework. <laughs> you guys are great. What uh, What did you do with them? Well, actually, I lobbied. Got Got to go to Washington. I got to help lobby Congress to increase funding uh, for, for cancer cigarette research uh, tax and all cancers okay. and and in, increasing in the state of California. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, yeah. Uh, uh, the state of California increased taxes on all tobacco 
products by two dollars, or cigarettes two dollars a pack. As a result of, of hopefully our mm-hmm. contribution, mm-hmm. lobbying Congress and all of that. Yeah. Uh, I I spoke to uh, the uh, American Cancer so- Society. Uh, is it AC? Um, well, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, there's a division of it that mm-hmm. that uh, I spoke to. And and told my story and, and and all, and I was so privileged. I felt so privileged to be able to do all of this. And I vowed, actually, when in treatment, that if I did make it out of this, yes. that I wanted to give back in any way I could. Oh, that's wonderful right. because it's so terrifying yeah. and and it's oh, such I a terrible imagine. thing. And it to, makes it all for a, a, not a good reason, but but then you feel that you're actually doing turning a terrible situation into a positive situation right. when you can do that. And exactly. your story helps others. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I and hope so. It, yeah. oh, it, big time. I hope big so. Big time because <laughs> people can relate. Of, yeah, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of people that actually get diagnosed with lung cancer that have never smoked. But I know. Just, That's yeah. the other thing. Secondhand. Yeah. Secondhand yeah. smoke and just genetic Genetics, predilection. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. You know, That's so, right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, not taking care of yourself and smoking, even though you have the genetic predisposition to, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. is just adding fuel to the fire. But it, right. just having the predisposition, the genetics of it, mm-hmm. you have to try to have your condition be that you take care of yourself, mm. self-care, yeah. and, and that especially respect. A lot of us grew up in households where we're smoking during the 50s and things like that. I know, Everybody. with the closed windows oh in the car. God, I, know. I, know. I mean, and, and I was a car do- waitress for years. Doctors mm. would oh, smoke. Exactly. During consultations <laughs> for <laughs> pregnancy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, They'd be well, well, the, smoking. The, the mother was smoking. Oh, yeah. My mom, I'm a product of a smoking, of a chain smoking mom. Yeah. Yeah. I say that I'm I'm like a small ham. I was smoked <laughs> in the womb. Yeah. You know, because my mom smoked all through yeah. pregnancy. Yeah, mine you know, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. My sister was six <laughs> weeks you were premature. Time. I, was, I was a pickled <laughs> cucumber. No. But, I mean, people were drinking back in those days too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People were marinating themselves. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they were drinking and smoking. And yet we all came out. I mean, yeah, I was, I, I, most part, well, not for you, because you had. <laughs> not for me. No, no, for no. The most part, most no, no, of us no, no, no. I was not no. For what, you. I, what I was about to say in childbirth, we were t- we were parents. Uh, our mothers had saddle blocks, but I'm saying not in your case. Oh. They didn't. No, my mother had a saddle. I, I grew up yeah. in Southern California, along yeah. the Beach Coast too, uh-huh. and my mother had. There were four of us, and she had saddle blocks. So yeah. she was knocked out. Oh, wow. She didn't okay. care about the natural process. <laughs> none right. of that. My older right. sister was six. Six weeks premature. My youngest oh my sister is a juvenile diabetic. All I'm convinced as a real result of you know bad, yeah. bad yeah. self care on my mom's part yeah. during pregnancy. But they in did. her defense, she didn't know better. She it was the t- did. Did. it was right. the time. Yeah. You know. Right. So we so. are yeah. getting close to our time, and I want to make sure that we we end on a really happy note because I know that you yeah, where um, you're at now where you're at now, and I know that you found love again. So yeah. let's talk about that a bit. Oh. Yeah. Now Beautiful you're. Wife. Okay. And and oh, okay. and you were with Chicago up until when? Well, so. actually, I was with Chicago a total of 28 years. Yes, almost 30 years from 1990 till January, February. Actually, was my last ago. shows wow. uh, mm-hmm. with with Chicago, 2018. So, uh, but I had actually made a I phone call. I have to say, I just have to say that I've actually went to the show uh, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Or, or, uh, yeah, about a year and a half ago, about six months before you made the decision. Uh-huh. And this man is so incredibly talented. Just oh. go to YouTube yeah. and look at some of these videos. Oh my God. Oh. I was in tears. Thank anyway, you. I just had to put that little that little yeah. thing sweet. in there. Thank you. You're <laughs> going to make me cry. It was oh. one of the best concerts I had been to in a very long time. And, she and goes oh, to thank a you. Lot of and I go to a lot. You know I'm a, yeah. a, a classic She's rock. She's still a, ju- fan. Uh, a junkie. I was uh, say, yeah, a groupie. A groupie. <laughs> Sorry, I am. I am. I am. I am. So, but the, but your talent oh, is yeah. is beyond talent. It's it's oh. it it comes from a higher source. It's something else altogether. Thank anyway, you. so you, Thank so you. February yes. was... Uh, was the last show I did with Chicago. How did they take it? <laughs> well, they actually, uh, you know, we talked about it, and it was like I, I'd been wrestling with, with, you know, this for a while. 
I just had, I was kind of just completely burnt out of being on the road as much as Chicago likes to travel, eight to ten months out of every year. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a lot. And, and having just been recently remarried mm-hmm. and not even even having time to have a honeymoon, mm-hmm. I kind of went, you know what? I don't know if I want to do another year. Yeah. But I was not dumb enough to just say, okay, that's it, everybody out of the pool. I'm not, <laughs> you yeah. know. I uh, I made a couple phone calls to see uh, about could... the possibility of, of still keeping my hand in. And uh, I, I there were two guys that I love dearly. I've had the honor and the privilege and truly the honor of, of playing with and recording with Michael McDonald and Kenny Loggins. Mm. And so Not I too called... shabby. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, called, I called both of them and and because uh, I, I knew that both of them tour more, far less mm-hmm. than, than Chicago. And uh, so I ran it by Kenny and, and I had played on his hit records mm-hmm. and all of that. And he, he and I always had a communication that I could look at his back and know what he was <laughs> feeling while I'm playing, yeah, you know. And so, that's a gift. So, yeah. yeah, it was. And so I I was so grateful because uh, after I told him, you know, I'm thinking about leaving the band. And he said, really? Would you like to do some shows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was that quick so, and easy. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Wow. So, uh so and the I'm band took Kenny. it okay? And, yeah, the, and well, who's the, replaced you oh, with well, Chicago? Oh, well, it was actually a, a real easy fit because uh, we had added a percussionist during the time I, uh, when I'd come out of treatment. Uh, we had a percussionist just in case the unthinkable mm-hmm. would happen mm. where, you know, if something would happen to me, the band has to perform. Right. And so it was a p- percussionist slash drummer Mm -hmm. a guy named drew hester who was a former student of mine actually and who went on to play with the foo fighters and like all kinds of joe walsh and and uh he's been with stevie nicks Mm -hmm. recently playing drums Mm -hmm. so he was playing percussion but he was covering for me while i was in treatment Mm -hmm. uh so uh we had a guy an unbelievably gifted drummer slash percussionist, Walfredo De Los Reyes Jr., uh, playing percussion at the time, uh, the past five years or whatever, before I, this past year. And uh, he is both, like, I mean, the drummer, the caliber of drummer he is, he was with Santana, playing drums mm, with incredible. Santana, one, with Steve Winwood. Mm. With uh, oh my God, the list goes yeah. on and on. Brilliant drummer. In fact, he's so good that I forbade, I completely <laughs> forbid him to sit at my drum set when any of the other band members were. <laughs> <laughs> you can play congas and play timbales and play all that other yeah. stuff you do over there. Stay don't on my show drum me set. up. <laughs> <I don't> wanna, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, they, they, so, he's so he's the one that, oh, yeah, nice. that got the chair, the drum chair. And so, now you have more yeah. free cool. time to be with your wife. And would tell us a little bit about your wife, her name. Oh, yeah. The, her name is Mary Montiel, and I'm proud to say Imboden. Yeah. And she she hyphenates it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. But Lovely. she's an amazing, amazing person whom all those things we, we scratch the surface of, you know, like, like – uh, you know, thoughts become things, mm-hmm. and and uh, and pos- positive thinking, and and she is is has reinforced the spirituality in my life mm-hmm. in a way that I mean I can't begin to thank her or say enough about it. And and aside from on every level, our compatibility. Uh, I mean, her sense of humor, her. Her, her, her love of music, uh, everything. Just yeah. everything, everything. Uh, her support uh, of you, and, and it sounds like you guys are a now, real does she true surf? match. Does she surf, too? She doesn't surf, <laughs> oh, okay. but... You get her out there. But, well, get her in Hawaii. Uh, Start warm water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, she's trying to surf, uh, but she was uh, a very accomplished uh, uh, 
high performance jet skier. Oh, wow. mm. So they're and, so comfortable in the water. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And born and raised in San Diego and lived all around yeah. there. Which you're uh, going back to. Uh, yeah, we're going back to too. Uh, but anyway, she was so high performance that she's had double hip replacement mm. wow. because you know, you know, it's a lot of wear and tear. Yeah. A lot yeah. of wear and tear. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, just to I don't be push cautious her when it comes of that. To, yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't push. Nice, her you guys. On, on this. Well, we are winding down. Are there any tours coming up? I know you said you are still doing a little bit. Just to let well, people know. Anything yeah. yep, that you're playing I'm, in the near near future? Not the near. Well, I, I have two shows. The begin, be, beginning of November. Excuse me. In <laughs> Niagara Falls with Kenny Loggins. Okay, very cool. And uh, after that, that I've got something I have to deal with, which is okay. it's a torn rotator cuff. Oh. All those years of playing drums. Oh, and oh and yeah, over and over again. The and same. Then, yeah, mm. the repetitive motion. I didn't and, know that. Yeah, so... That wasn't in my research. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was in the future, Debbie. You just you just researched. The I know. Past. I'm yeah. darn. Your psychic abilities are a bit weak right now. Bummer. Well, if I'd seen you in the gym, yeah, like I, would last week, I would have known that. I would have known because you would have been babying your shoulder. Yeah. So, any oh. word, final words of yes. wisdom to leave our audience with, Tris, from everything that you've you've had a yes. wonderful life thus far, and uh, and very grateful, I'm sure. What do you What do you have to say? Final thought. For me, I think, and I learned this from my wife. She puts it so beautifully. Lean towards what makes fe- makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. Always, always. And if you can cultivate joy, it attracts joy. The law of attraction just is such that when things get better, they yes. just get better. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and, and better and better and better. Snowfall. And yeah. Love it. I love that. Yeah. That's, That's a great, great note yep. to end on. And yes. we thank you oh, so much from you. the bottom of our hearts yeah. taking time out of your day well, to you share both. your story. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And your really wife is a very this. lucky woman. Oh, <laughs> yes. we'll May that. we say thank that. You, Thank yeah. you. High okay. five that. <laughs> yeah. And we thank you for joining okay. us today. We'll be right back here next week. Yes. Dallin Debbie's Mind, Body, Good. Soul. See you at 1 p.m. next week. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Have a thank wonderful you. wonderful week. Bye-bye.